Oh, now first and foremost, sir, welcome Hi, back. Hi, everyone. Yeah. Welcome back. Thank you. Gosh, we're glad to have you. It's good to be back. As you know, it's a TV show, so I'm going to get the crowd to burst into spontaneous applause, and then we're going a to... A TV uh, show. Yeah, it's a TV show. You're a very big deal if I no one told you. I have to watch my language. <laughs> yeah. No, you don't. No, you don't. It's a charter. We do what we oh, want. Oh, okay. All right, on the count of three, the audience goes crazy. We get things kicked off. One, two, three. Thank you so much for coming up to be with us here today for another edition of All Access Pass. I am Jason, your cruise host, whether you're watching live here in the venue or watching us on TV back in your staterooms. Thank you for being a part of this. Do me a favor. Please help me thank an absolute legend of KC and the Sunshine Band. Put your hands together for KC. Hello. Man, it has been, uh, it's been a minute. It, it, it's been one hell of a time. <laughs> We yeah. finished this cruise two years ago together, yeah. and then the world shut down. The right. World, after this, that. this is our first uh, show since uh, in two years. Is it really? Yeah. So this is our inaugural show tonight. Yeah. Wow, I yeah. didn't realize that. So you guys are just getting back to it. It's, tonight's the night. Tonight is the night. I'm nervous as hell too. <laughs> Uh, well, that's actually a great point, because I was talking to, the, on the last cruise, we were talking to some of the 70s rock stars, and I was talking to uh, Air Supply, I was talking to Graham and Russell, and they were saying, if you don't have butterflies at all anymore, you're not doing it right. Right. If you feel a little bit nervous, that's very cool, and I think that's something that people... Yeah, they've always grant. said, it, you know, once you don't get nervous, your career is over, so... I better be nervous yeah. tonight, right? <laughs> we want you to keep going. She said, don't worry, we love you. Oh, good, that yeah. good. And I, I pulled a hamstring during rehearsal. Uh, we've been rehearsing for the last three weeks because I had to remember everything over yeah. again. <laughs> I hope, I, I, I'm worried. I don't know what I'm going to forget tonight, but I'm sure I'll forget something. I have a feeling you're going to be in front of a, what we like to call a forgiving crowd, a well, crowd that loves yeah, you and doesn't really good. care as long as you're here. All right, good. <laughs> Consider this a safe space. A safe yeah. space. Yeah. Okay. If there's anywhere you can do a first show, it's, it's got to be the disco cruise. Right? Uh, yeah. Uh, I, I know we obviously were very, very excited to get you back. Uh, and I know you kind of just mentioned it, but it's got to feel pretty good to walk around a little bit today to see all the folks, you know, the disco t-shirts and the fellow bands. It's got to feel good. Yeah, to we were just having there. dinner, and I think there's a band, Terry, uh, Denny Terrio's on the, yep. on the deck down there. Yep, Denny is. Everybody's there. having a great time. These are, I mean, these cruises are amazing. I mean, there's so much fun. Uh, we did one out of, um, we did like an 80s cruise out of Australia a few yeah. years ago, and we were on the ship for eight days, and... It was just amazing, right? Like, there's music 24 hours a day everywhere yeah. you go, everywhere you walk around and stuff. You know, it's, it, it's pretty wild. Great, yeah. It's, uh, it's a testament to this, the power of the music. And all my friends are on the cruise. The Jackson, yeah. Cool in the Gang, George McRae, Thelma Houston. And you and George go way back. We do, because I wrote his first You wrote his first big hit, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, we, you mentioned that last time we were, actually, George was here last time we were talking. Right, he, he was sitting right, right over there, there. Yeah. That's right. Um, yeah. That that was right out of the that was right out of the gates for you too. That was early seventies ish. Seventy four. Yeah. Nineteen seventy four. April nineteen seventy four. Yeah. And you were just starting to kind of get moving. And, and yeah. How did that come about? How did you end up writing for George? Or, well, I, mean, I was writing for other artists at TK at the time, and George was one of them. George was married to uh, an artist there, Gwen McRae, his, his wife, an artist. Anyway, Gwen McRae was an artist at TK, and she always got all the attention, and George did. I think they would just do things for George to appease him because, you know, he was the wife of Gwen McRae. And uh, you know the other song, Let Me Do Your Rockin' Chair. You remember that song? Yeah, that, that was Gwen McRae. But anyway, she was, she, she, she was really one of the main artists at TK. And... Um, so I was really working on my own album at the time, and I came up with this song, and, and I thought, you know, maybe George would, you know, could sing this or whatever. And I called him in the office and hummed the melody to him, and he started singing. I said, yes. And I took, we went upstairs and put his vo vocal on it, and six weeks later, it was number one in 51. I was going to say, it exploded. Yeah. yeah. It's nuts, yeah. And, uh, and, and you and George have remained friends. We are? For yeah. many, many, yeah. many, many moons. I heard he's, did he already get off the ship? No, he's on, he's on. Oh, he's, he's still on. Okay. He's actually performing in the nightclub tonight. Uh, oh, okay. He did a show last night in here, and he's doing a nightclub visit. Okay, course, awesome, awesome. Studio 55. Uh, now, before we get into any guest questions, I've got to ask, what have you been up to for the past couple of years while we've all been enduring all of this? <laughs> Evidently, I've been in the refrigerator. <laughs> 
I think you look great, man. Don't short yourself. You know, that's the only place they didn't say that they didn't mandate a mask, you know. <laughs> Just in the refrigerator. <laughs> You know, so I don't did, know. did you find yourself falling into any different or unique hobbies or anything? I mean, did you, did you find yourself motivated to write more or you know, anything? <laughs> I think, you know, you know, I think the people that, that work at my house or whatever just want me to get the hell out of there. <laughs> I started doing all kind of things around the house and stuff and, you know, driving everybody crazy there because, they're you know, they're used to be, be gone. They have a rhythm. Time, you know. yeah. What the hell are you doing here? You know, <laughs> this is our house. <laughs> you know? So... So, I, you know, I just did a lot of projects around the house, and I laid around a lot. Uh, you know, because usually I would go to the gym every day for an hour, and then I'd play tennis for an hour, and, and then they closed all that stuff down, and then I would, there was no, no touring and stuff. So I went from, like, being this really active person to doing nothing. I mean, I didn't know yeah. what to do but just lay around, I, yeah. you know. And now you're pulling hamstrings yeah. in rehearsal. Yeah, I know. <laughs> well, I forgot. I, I, I didn't stretch, so that was really a bad idea. Yeah, but. So, yeah, so, I mean, I just – did things around the house and, you know, um, actually it was a good thing in a way because, you know, my whole life's been just on the go and everything. So it was actually a good time for me to just chill out for the first time in my life. And I'm 71 now, you know, and so it was the first time and I don't know how long that I was just sitting around and able to be with my friends and my dogs and do things with my, you know, my, my, my sister and my nephews and great nephews and great, great nephews and all that sort of stuff. And just kind of be a, like a, in a normal life, yeah. you know what I mean? Which I never have experienced that really. And so it was, it was kind of nice in a way, you know. I, a I'm lot sure. of reflection and just a lot of it. I, I even got to the point that I thought, I don't want to go back on tour again. Interesting. Yeah, I almost made that decision that that, that was going to be it. Um, and, but I, here I am. I decided... <laughs> You know, so I, you know, everyone said, no, why don't you just, you need to keep going. And I thought, yeah, you know, let me give it a shot. So I thought I would do this year and then see where it goes. Sure. Yeah. There's something to be said for, I mean, you've been going strong since the early 70s. I mean, yeah. you've been touring regularly. Yeah. You guys obviously exploded not far, not long after that and became, you know, Casey and the Sunshine yeah. Band. And that is a world, you know, worldly recognized, you know, name in, in yeah. your hits and everything. It has to be, I mean, to your point, it has to be kind of unique to be able to take that minute to breathe and do nothing. I mean, you haven't done that well, since I mean, you were a kid. I mean, I'm, I'm sure it affected everyone that way. I mean, we were sure. all just like, we didn't have a choice. We were like putting these situations and, you know, a lot of people changed careers. They moved on. They did all kinds of different things during that time. And a lot of people were connected with families and connected with each other and, you know, it caused divorces and everything else. <laughs> and, you know, and people like, like got sick of each other. And yeah. I don't know, you know, maybe and also brought people together too, yeah. you know. And so, um, you know, it was just, it was kind of an interesting pause in life sure. that none of us expected. And, you know, we all got through it, and here we all are, and we're having a great time. And, you know, I mean, don't you love this ship? I mean, it's amazing. It's very cool. I mean, I've been on this ship four or five times, to- four times, yeah. not, not as a performer, but as a guest. Oh, know? wow. Because I, I, I used to, uh, every October I would take a cruise, and it was always on Celebrity. And I've been on the Summit and Infinity and um, the Millennium, and uh, all the newer shit, I can, I, the Silhouette, I mean, I yeah, can't even think of it. The Edge, the Edge, the ones, Edge, yeah. oh, it was awesome. But uh, I love celebrity, celebrity ships, and, um, uh, you know, th- th- this one's been revamped since I was on it. I mean, Yeah, you know, big one. Yeah. So, yeah, but, but uh, nice. yeah, I love, I, I mean, are, are you guys having fun? I mean, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I know. Look at them. They've been I, going hard for two and a half days right. already. They, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, if, personal question. You said you have dogs. What kind of dogs do you have? I have two golden retrievers. Oh. I have a 12-year-old and a 5-year-old. Oh, yeah. nice. A the male and a female. Two generations kind of. Well, every, if, I mean, yeah. my, my female is getting old. And yeah. I almost lost her two weeks ago. She had oh. pancreatitis. But um, she's doing really great now. Oh, good. And she'll be 13 in August, which is long for a it's golden. getting up there. And so, you, you know, when she goes, then I'll get another female. So it just it, somehow, I had one female that lived to be 16, so she kind of threw off all the numbers a little yeah. bit, you know. The, I feel like dogs in a lot of ways get us through a lot. Oh, yeah. You know, having, having, having pets like that, having yeah. pups. Uh, I opened the, the floor up to a handful of questions from the audience, if you'd be so I kind. Just, I thought you were going to say you opened the door. I thought, yeah, I opened the door, yeah, <laughs> or let in the breeze. Uh, Connie, who comes to us from Miami, 
Hello, KC. Oh, ooh, she wants to know. Are you married by chance? Where's Connie? Is Where's Connie? Where's Connie? Wave a hand, Connie. Where'd oh, she you go? just asked a question. And no, left. Connie's hiding now. <laughs> she's here. Well, let's not answer her question. No, where is she? <laughs> Connie, where are you? No, nope, she's right there. Where are you, Connie? She was just here. I just saw her. Connie asked the question, then left. All right, Connie, I see how you are. Never no, mind. No, I'm single. I'm single. Never mind. Oh, you are single. My, my, my thing, my friend, um, oh, my God, um, Tisha, um, uh, we we'll have some friends in here, and I can't remember their name. We'll come back to it. You think carefully about it. We'll come back to it. Oh, this is a good question. Um, Sarasota, Florida. Is it Connie from Florida? Are you here, Connie? No, I'm just joking. Um, I think this is... Maybe she's from somewhere else. This is true. Maybe it's a different Connie. I can't tell if this is Nathan or Matthew, forgive me, from Sarasota, Florida. Matthew? Thank you, Matthew. Where's Matthew? Right there, right okay. in the front. Hey, Matt. What has been the secret to staying together for this long? Well, I mean, I don't think, well, there is no secret because we haven't really been together. I've had like 20 different horn players and right, the, the band tonight, um, our, our guitar player passed away last year, not of COVID, but he had, he had oh, cancer sorry. and heart problems. And um, so we have a new guitar player here tonight, a new, one of the dancers is new, and one of the keyboard players is new. So we've been through quite a, quite a few different guitarists, and, you know, the band broke up in the, in the 80s, the original group, and so since then it's been different guitar players, drummers, um, horn players, singers, dancers. And you unofficially, officially retired in the 80s from that business, right? And then went solo, is that what it was? Well... <laughs> I really can't go solo because every time I go as KC, nobody knows who the hell I am. I have to go, <laughs> and the Sunshine Band. So, so that didn't work. Um, but you, were t you walked away for a minute there and then, and then rekindled all and got yes. it back going as... as uh, Tina. 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 <laughs> there, there, there it is. Sorry. I, I... Two years of COVID, he's in his 70s. Cut the man some slack for crying in the dark. It's, he's been working hard. Uh, <laughs> you, you, it, the, the band, if, let's go back to the beginning just for a moment, if you don't mind. Let's, let's go back to early. What inspired you to get into music in the first place? I, you know, I grew up in, I grew up in the gospel church and my, my family was very, uh, very musically inclined. And, um, so I was always around music. My mother loved music. Uh, she loved R&B music. So I was always listening to Nancy Wilson and the Flamingos and all this yeah. great R&B music of the 50s and into the 60s. And I just, um, I never thought of doing anything else. I mean, it just it was like my calling. I, yeah. I remember, I know I said this before, but I, I remember like, you know, every year in, in elementary school, you would have to, um, you know, they would give that three by five card to fill out or whatever. And it said occupation. I would put entertainer. I'm sure they thought, you know, we got a winner here. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I mean, everybody else is putting like carpenter, you know, Indian, um, um, sheriff, uh, yeah. you know, going to the army and everything. And they became the village people, but yeah, but you know, so <laughs> no, really, I just, <laughs> You can clap for that. Come on. <laughs> they were in the Navy. Yeah. I, they, the Navy, yes. Yeah. <laughs> I, I got that one wrong. <laughs> I couldn't, oh, I forgot the biker. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> uh, yeah, I, so you were, you were into it from the start. You, you knew this is what you wanted to do. Yeah, I mean, I just pretty much kind of knew. I mean, it's, it's kind of, um, interesting kind of weird in a way I mean I even had this number in my head like 23 or something like that or and I it happened you know when I turned 20 yeah. it was it's been very kind of weird you were talking about that before how yeah. you almost kind of predicted a lot yeah. of your successes and, points and, and throughout your career. and I wasn't sure how all this was going to happen it's just like I knew that it was supposed to happen it was meant to be and there was never any question I wasn't sure how it was going to happen or when it was going to happen and just things all moved in the right, you know, God, God does miracles, and he just moved everything in the right directions, in the right places, and it all kind of happened, you know. And, and we are blessed and better for it out here, I know that yeah, for sure. Thank you, thank you. At, at what point uh, did you know that you weren't just going to be an entertainer, but you were going to be something special? Did that ever hit you? No, 
um, I was just doing something I loved. And, excuse me. Not at all. And, um, you know, when, when, when you're doing that, when you're starting out doing it or whatever, you know, you're just doing something because you love it. I mean, everything you do, everything we all, we all do, is you do it because you love it. And then sometimes there's these amazing rewards that happen from, and it's like, how'd that happen? You know, I mean, I wasn't expecting that, you know. And so um, I never was looking at, like, I'm going to try to change things or I'm going to try to do this. I was never trying to be anything but just me and try to, to, to make music and do what I, what I, what I love to do and, and never thought it would get to all this. Because, I, 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 number one, I was at a record company that always had a lot of number one hit, one hit wonders, they called them, you know, where you had one hit. So after I had the first hit, I was like, okay, that's my career's over. <laughs> yeah, that's it, you know. <laughs> then we had two and then three and then four. I was like, wow, you know, this is crazy. So I, I, we broke that kind of, you know, omen or whatever was the stigma. The, the stigma. Yeah. And so, um, yeah, I mean, you, you, don't, you don't think of those things. I mean, I never think of those things. I yeah. don't think, you know, I, I don't have expectations of people or really of life or whatever. I, you know, it's just whatever's going to happen for the moment or whatever. You know, and I hate people that have expectations to be like, you're supposed to call me back. No, I, I'll call you. you when know, I call when you. I, when I call you. <laughs> Don't expect me to do anything. You know what I mean? I, I, I hate that. I really do. And, um, um, that, that's, uh, if I don't, if you don't mind, I, I like that though, because I think it also, it allows you to live in the moment too, right. not just to be caught up into where you should right. be or what you're supposed to do or what you're supposed to say or who you're supposed to meet up with. Right. It allows you to, to, you know, go with the flow to a certain right. extent and kind of be present. Yeah. I mean, I just, I mean, <clears throat> I, when I, I don't have expectations of my friends, I mean, you know, be, they're all busy They're So if they don't call me, they don't call me. You know what I mean? I don't like, you didn't call me last week. How come you didn't call me two minutes ago? And you know, <laughs> I was thinking about you. You didn't call me. Why didn't you call me? I was thinking about you. So I, I don't, I don't like that kind yeah. of thing. You know, I just, I like life to be, you know, just as it, as it, it can as be simple. It doesn't have to be as yes, hard as we exactly. make it at times. Yeah. It really doesn't. Uh, and, and with that, with that concept of when you were creating Casey and, and the Sunshine Band in the beginning, um, were you more relaxed about it? Did you find yourself, I'm going to use a horrible term, did you find yourself to be militant the, about the, the band? The, the only concept that I really had in my head, and I, I remember this so distinctly because it was like I felt like music had gotten very dark. At, the, at a certain period in the uh, in the seventies, like seventy three, seventy four, we you know it was the first um, it, America was the world was dark because we were first going for the first oil crisis and they were raising gas and you had to you had to, if you were, had an odd number tag you got your gas on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday or whatever and it was even it was Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday or whatever that and Sunday I'm, sh I'm not sure where they. What they did with that. Day of the Lord. But, no one gets yeah. gas on the Day of the Lord. Yeah. No, if, yeah. You, if you have both numbers, you can go on that day. <laughs> yeah. So, um, <laughs> so you know, I just felt like, you know, music had gotten really dark. And I know I loved, always loved, I, I've always loved all kinds of music, up-tempo, you know, and, and, and mid-tempo stuff. I just love all kinds of music. And so I just wanted to, but I always loved, like, up-tempo. And I just wanted to do an album that was, like, all up tempo, just all up energy. You know, it's a mid tempo. If it was mid tempo, that would be okay. But nothing slow in it. You know, nothing like "Please Don't Go." That song, terrible. Like, no, I know. Horror. Whoever put that together? No, but <laughs> <laughs> no, but it, but you know, like I, I would buy these great these songs. that were all like danceable, and you you'd buy yeah. the album and then feel good. The rest of them would put you to sleep. So I just the only concept that I had was to do an album from side A to side B that would be all just up tempo stuff that would just keep you energized and you know if you were at a party you could just put it on and just play and turn it over and keep playing and and have a good time so that was the only concept yeah. that the, the, you know thought that i had in my head and uh, and you got there and i, I got mean there. Yeah, yeah you did exactly that yeah. and who were your early influences then as you were kind of i mean you oh said my God. music you know, was kind of dark I'd, but ha i'd have to say i was influenced by everyone really i mean i, I loved motown i loved all that uh, atlantic stuff with aretha franklin and um uh you know, Benny King and the, the Drifters and all of that, the great, great music. And, yeah. and uh, you know, then there was James Brown. And uh, I remember him telling me just, I, I remember when I came out of retirement, he says, don't you ever stop again. Don't you ever. And um, listen so, to the Godfather. If he yeah, tells you, yeah. Yeah, mm. yeah absolutely. And uh, he says, you got to keep, you just got to keep, you know, you got to be out here. So I took that advice. Um Yes, yeah, so I, I, I was just influenced by a lot of different things, sure. you know. 
I, I in the, especially the keyboard, I loved all that Joe Cocker stuff, and Lee yeah. Michaels was an amazing keyboardist, and um, uh, you know, I, and then there was all the stack stuff with Johnny Taylor yeah. and uh, the Stable Singers and the Barquets and the Marquette Marquees mm -hmm. and just all those great R and B acts. I mean, I just listened to everything. So I think I was influenced by a lot of different things. You know, probably maybe Motown a little bit more eventually because Motown just had you know. The Temptations and the Four Tops. Just monsters. The Supremes and, you know, just monster. Yeah. Bands. And as you were starting to get into the business, did you find yourself more attracted to the writing side of it, more attracted to the performing side of it equally? or? Well, I started out, um, you know, co-writing. My I had my first uh, song on the charts, I think, in, was ni in when I was 19 or, 19 or 20, I think, uh, on the Billboard charts. Um, it was a song with Clarence Reed, and he was a songwriter that wrote uh, Betty Wright's Clean Up Woman and a lot of other great, great R&B records. And um, um, uh, I lost my thought. Well, I was asking about difference between oh, songwriting so and performing, if one of them attracted you more than the other necessarily back No, then. I mean, I, you know, they're, they're all, they're, they're different in their own, in their, you know, sure. in, in their own way. I mean, like, the writing's one thing, and yeah. then the performing's the other thing. I think the things are always going through my head. I mean, I've got notes on my phone like crazy, <laughs> like, oh, this, this might be a good song. There's a concept. And nothing yeah. ever happens with it, you know. It's exactly the same thing comedians do, right? Yeah. Comedians, if you've ever known, or you've obviously have, but if you've ever known a comedian, there's always a notepad or a notes on their phone, and little lines will just, and they'll just put down a line. And later, they will try to develop that into, yeah. in your case, a song for a comedian but, a bit. But, you know, before cell phones, it would be a napkin and a matchbook. Yeah. <laughs> Anything with a little white space right, that you can scribble. A, oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, there it is, there it is. Yeah, there. Now, out of all, I mean, obviously, you have an absolutely legendary career to this point. You received more awards and accolades than really we can count. Is there any one of them that means more to you? I mean, is there something that you look at as an accomplishment that you go, wow, that's a defining moment for me? No, you know what means the most to me? What means the most to me out of all of this? The awards don't mean anything. You know, those, sure. those are great because sometimes they're from your peers and, and stuff like that. But what means the most to me is that my music made people happy, that my music got people through a bad day, uh, that my music made people feel good. That's, that's what it's all about, I think. That's what my purpose was here. It has been my purpose here. That's a great answer. Was to do that. That's a great answer. And I, I think, you know, thank you. I really, I, I, I think that's what's really most important uh, yeah. over all of the, everything. The other things are just, um, what do you call those things? Uh, window dressing to a certain extent? Well, yeah. window, window dressings, yeah. but, um, you know, what is it when you have possessions? When you have possessions? Possessions, yeah. Uh, material. Yeah. Material. Material that, things, yeah. That was the word I was looking that's for. That's the word we were going. Not the one you sew with. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I hear your point in that I, I'm assuming when you reach the level of, of accolades that you've received, it's not pedantic by any stretch of the imagination, but to right. a certain extent, if you're still reaching an audience, that's got to mean more, right? I mean, exactly. I, I think that's what you're kind of getting yeah. to there. That yeah. When you have a crowd that shows up and knows every lyric to every song and is dancing and jamming and having a good time. Well, that scares me. <laughs> because if I forget a word, yeah, they... Exactly. <laughs> They know you Whoops. screwed up in that play. Yeah. Their lips move different than mine. I just, I just effed up. <laughs> well, you're in one of those places now. The disco oh, cruise know, is, uh, yeah. Oh, I know. They will be singing every lyric tonight. Yes. And, uh, yeah. The good news is you can always just down, yeah, <laughs> if you have to. I, you know what? I'm going to have to start getting those monitors that every other artist has. With the big the lyrics? The teleprompter, yeah. yeah. <laughs> You will. You go on stage if you're with, you know, speaking on behalf of Kate. You'll go on stage if you follow an actor and Drew Snack, and sometimes they have these mega 60-inch oh, yeah. televisions. It just runs their lyrics, just in case, just oh, yeah. in case. Uh, so now that, we're, now that the world is somewhat back to action again, and, you know, we're obviously able to perform again, and we're able to get back on stage, and tours are starting to fire back up, what is coming up next for you guys? What's, what are Casey and the Sunshine Band doing? Well, we have a lot of things kind of happening. Um, we're working on a, a Broadway musical and oh, a, very cool. a, a movie, but it's not about my life. It's about my life pre-1975 or pre-hit. Okay. Pre uh, up, up to that point, really. I thought that would be a, a more interesting story. 
um, it's five years before that all happens, I think, out of high school. You were supposed to say that's pretty young, right? Because, yeah. I mean, you hit, you hit pretty young. Well, I was so. 23. Yeah. I, I mean, 22, 23, yeah. So um, it's about that, those times. <clears throat> I think there's a book involved in it. Um, I've just recorded, in the last 10 years, 56 songs. Wow. And so we were supposed to release all of it in um, February 19th. February, I mean, 2019, and then all this happened, and that canned it, uh, because we're really, what we're doing is, you know, our logo was always the rainbow colors, and um, it wasn't something I came up with or whatever, uh, it was whoever the artist was that TK hired at the time to do our logo, uh, put the rainbow yeah. in, 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 mm -hmm. in the logo, and so um, then, the, so we kind of carried that thought on, you know, like in the part three album, we did the rainbow and the gold logo mm -hmm. or whatever. So we thought like, what, what I'm doing is keeping in line with all of that is there's, um, since there's 56 songs, there's eight colors in the rainbow. <laughs> um, we're releasing eight songs a month and each one will be a different color of vinyl. So one's red, then one's green. The whole vinyl, the actual the pressed thing. vinyl. Then the last one is all of the colors together, kind of. Uh, That's so, very cool. So that, that's the whole plan, and it ends up being almost like three CDs uh, if you download them or whatever, and I'll make sure that all the prices are the same, so it's all sure. even if you get all three, all three, if you just buy whatever, um, or you just stream it. Um, but that, that's, that's the plan. It'll be eight releases and then eight songs a month. And um, my manager wanted to do uh, 52 Weeks of Sunshine, and when we had 52 songs, and I just keep writing them. <laughs> you messed up the premise. I messed up. Yeah. And I thought that was just too quick, one song a week for 52 weeks. So I, we, we came up with this different plan. And when do you have a rough time when you, that'll see the light of day? Well, I, I, I don't know if it's, it'll be, it, hopefully this year, um, nice. you know, when I get back, we just, you know, just kicking things off now. Yeah. So I need to have a meeting with them and, and see where, you know, what dates we're going to set for that. And touring-wise, are you touring mostly in the States this year? Are you getting out of the States? Uh, we are going to Chile in April. Um, that's We were supposed to do that two years ago, yeah. three years. They've just postponed it seven times and keep moving it. So um, that's one thing we have uh, other than coming here that's out of the U.S. Um, you know, we'll probably do 50, sh 50 shows this year or whatever. Uh, there's talk of us. I know we were talking to the, the B-52s are doing a farewell tour. <clears throat> so we may um, join that tour for 12 shows or something. That's cool. It was on, then it was off, and I <laughs> think it might be back on again. I'm not sure, but yeah. Are you going, to, when you go to Chile, is it, uh, is it just you guys? Or are you no, guys we're going with Cool with in the Gang. You're going with Cool in the Gang. Yeah. Oh, I was gonna, yeah. That's why I was asking, because yeah. Robert was talking about it yesterday yeah. up here. With, oh, yeah, yeah, so yeah. I thought as much. Right. Uh, by the way, uh, Terry, who comes from, is Terry from Miami here? Terry's here. Terry, do you hey, know uh, Connie from Miami? <laughs> okay. Just curious, because if you know her, tell her she's in trouble with KC now. Uh, I'll find Connie tonight in the audience. Yeah, you're in trouble. Uh, Terry says, we would love to have you back on the Disco Cruise next year and every year. Just well, FYI. That's, uh, that's awesome. Terry wants you here all the time. And I concur. I concur. So. Thank you. Thank you. So as you're getting ready to go to go out and go back on tour and get it going, um, you mentioned, you, you kind of mentioned that at the end of these last couple of years, you kind of thought for a moment about not touring right. anymore. Yeah. And now as you're kind of getting back into it, and you said you're going to kind of give it this year to see. So yeah. at the end of this year, you're going to basically have a look at it, see how you feel, see what's going on, and make some decisions? I mean, I am 71. I mean, Big Jagger is 78, so I don't know. I mean, I could do this year and then announce my five or six year farewell <laughs> tour. <you know? laughs> That's gonna, that's yeah. the plan. You got to do the Leonard Skinner style and play right? like a thousand shows on your hour. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> that's great. <laughs> um, out of all the places you get to play in the world, out of all the places, did a, did a country or a city or a state or where, did anything just take you completely off guard? No, every every place is like individual. I mean, yeah. um, I, I don't I don't know. I don't. I, I can't say off guard. The reason I ask it, like, for instance, I was sitting with the Beach Boys on an interview one time, right. and they said, man, the first time we went to Japan, it was bananas. Um, and well, it just blew us away how much they knew of our lyrics. They knew every word in English. And Well, that, that, always, that, that always surprises you. I mean, if you want us to talk about Japan, I thought the interesting thing about Japan was the first time we went that threw me off a little bit was they didn't have seats, but they had aisles for them to stand. 
So if you, were st if you were in row A, you stood in row A, and it was all taped off, and everybody stood in their little row, and it was like, oh, that's interesting. It's very, yeah. <laughs> it's very organized yes. is what that is. That would come from Japan. Yeah, little box yeah that, would, that would come from Japan. That's, yeah, that, yeah, we couldn't manage that here. No, it, no. it takes a culture that has that ability. No, we it, don't have that. We're way too disorganized right. for that type of life. I've seen these folks in the show lounge each night. It's just mayhem. It's just <laughs> you should have seen the pool a minute ago. Yeah, I, I did. I did. <laughs> Boogie Wonder Band is out there yeah. knocking them dead. Uh, but I know you got to get down, and we got to get you back to, uh, to, to your rehearsal to finish up downstairs. Uh, before we do, uh, I just want to ask, what does it mean to you? What does it mean to you to perform in front of a crowd that you know, in a large part, is here just for disco? I know how much disco means to you, and it always has. What is it like to perform into a crowd that it means that much to them as well? You don't have that oil and water mix. You have a crowd that loves one thing out there. I'm nervous. <laughs> no, I mean, I, uh, this is what I love. My, that my, my happiest moments, my happiest moment in life is going to be the hour or whatever we share with you tonight on that stage. That is my happiest That's awesome. moment. That's when I'm at my happiest in life because it's it, it's that moment and it's special because I don't have to none of us have to think about anything else outside of that room but that what's happening that night and all that happiness that's in the room and totally you know just being totally. one with you know and the, the other thing is you know it, it's it, it's very interesting because without that moment I have no connection with 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 everyone who's supported us, you know what yeah. I mean. That's that's my one connection. Yeah. Uh, you know this. You know everybody reads all the fan stuff, and you know all about me and everything. But I don't know anything about you know you until I get there that night, and you're sitting there like this. <laughs> Entertain me. <laughs> yeah. No. And then I'm one of those people that does that. You know. <laughs> no. So, so that that's my one moment you know, sure. that I get to connect, and that's what makes it special. Yeah. I, to just tag into that, I, I, on the first day of the cruise, one of the things I say to everybody, especially on this cruise, is, uh, you know, there's a lot of things happening in the world, and it's okay to be present this right. week. Yeah. It's okay to be here, to enjoy yeah. the music, to enjoy the vibe and the feel, to be kind to one another. The world is a lot right now, and we all have to go back to that. Right. But while we're here for these No, I'm days, going back to Florida. Well, yeah, we, fair we, enough, yeah. We don't have that situation. <laughs> yes. Nothing is happening in Florida. It's true. It's true. Uh, I, I want to sincerely say thank you on behalf thank of Star you. Vista Live. And I know I speak for the guests that we have here and watching on TV. means the world to me to have you here. Before everyone rushes up, I do ask a kindness. We unfortunately do have to get Casey downstairs right now to finish his, his tech run to be prepared for you tonight. I know you want autographs, but I know you want a great show tonight more than you want that autograph. So be kind. We're going to allow him to sneak out of here and get back downstairs. But do me a favor. Thank He's you, absolutely everyone. world class. Took his time to come up here and hang out with us for half an hour. KC of KC and the Sunshine Band. Thanks, everybody. Have a great day. We'll see you out in about. Love the ultimate disco cruise. They love disco. This is the place to be. They call it a cruise, but it's a major party. Come join the party as we celebrate the greatest dance music ever on the ultimate disco cruise 2023. This is one of those cruises where there's never a dull moment. This is the big sing along. You'll see the hottest acts light up the ship day and night with live performances by Cool and the Gang, Billy Ocean, Taylor Dane. Sister Sledge featuring Kathy Sledge, Tavares, Norma Jean Wright and Lucy Martin, formerly of Chic, Evelyn Champagne King, Heat Wave, The Tramps featuring Earl Young, Al McKay All-Stars, C&C Music Factory, Radio, and many more surprises. It's six days, five nights, over 40 shows. It is amazing. This cruise is high energy. And the superstars that are coming out here, the engagement that they have with the guests is just simply phenomenal. One of the nicest things about the Ultimate Disco Cruise is that these musicians are on board with you. 
sailing from Miami February 25th to March 2nd, 2023 on the beautifully appointed Celebrity Summit and making sunny ports of call in Cozumel and Key West. This has been the number one best cruise I've ever taken. Guess what? We're coming back next year. It was so much fun. We will be back next year and the next year and the next year. Ultimate disco cruise, baby. I'm here. Don't miss the boat. Pack your dancing shoes and get ready to get down on the Ultimate Disco Cruise 2023.